Welcome back, it is Friday and that means FNA Friday for new animators and today it is part five of animation blocking. So you might be using a rig that comes with a school, meaning you go to Animation Mentor or Anime School or Anime, whatever you have, and it might come with a body picker, an animation pose library and all kinds of tools and helpful things that will speed up your workflow. And that has existed for quite some time. You can do a Google search on tools for animation and you can see this all the way back to 2014. They outline all kinds of tools that you have. You can look here where are the different schools, all kinds of sites have examples for different schools and everything. And this goes on and on and on. But it seems like nowadays Studio Library is a big one. So you can use this for all of your needs. Well, let's pretend that you don't. Let's say the rig doesn't have it or you can't install this. Your Maya doesn't support it. Whatever it is, I don't know. Like there could be a moment where you don't have anything at your disposal to create a quick and easy to access and fast library of poses. So there's no need for me to talk about the studio library. You got the animation movies. You got the demo movies online. There's all the tutorials. All that is there for you to look at. So I'm talking about, again, the moment where you have a rig where none of that is available. So let's take a look at Maya. So if this is your rig, and today I'm gonna to talk about hands. You got your hand pose, it's in a default position, and you can see all the controllers here. All right, so then you have to go in there and select one by one, and change things one by one. This could take quite some time. So what do you do? Well, one thing that I sometimes use is, I go back and open up my timeline and go all the way back and let's say I want different poses. So this is your main pose, right? Now have a little thing here, just again, if you don't have any anim picker, you just select in your script editor, you wanna select all of your controllers. You can go clear history, and then you have your thingy. So if you deselect it, you wanna see it here, but then you can just select all of your controllers. You have it in here, you take that, drag it over in here, and already have this, I say yes in terms of a mail script, and here it is. So again, this is very, very old school, but for this example, that's what I used. And again, this is for a fast workflow. This doesn't have to have every single pose in the world, where imagine you put it on a table, you got all that. These are just the main poses, the basic poses, in terms of a fist, a hand that's out, a pointing, just a general list of things that you might use in your first blocking pass, just to tell a story, so that you're not stuck in those robotic hand poses all the time. So as you have your default pose, well, what if you need one that's a bit more spread out? And I'm looking at this from different angles because it's not gonna work from every angle. Again, it's just a general idea. You see some offsets in the fingers, but maybe you need it spread out like this. What if you need it where it's a bit more relaxed? And this could be, it pretends the character is gesturing. So imagine the character, there's no uh, butt here, but it's a gesture out. So you might have a more relaxed pose. But what if you need to have a more relaxed pose in terms of just hanging there, right? So this would be a general pose that you want most of the time because you don't want this in your scene. You don't want something where it's a very cliche, robotic, flat hand. Now you can go further and let's say you need potentially something that's a bit more aggressive or in pain. Now you need potentially someone that points. Why not? Or something where is depending on if you play a certain video game right now, whatever you have, this could be useful or a thumbs up, again, depending on what angle and maybe potentially a fist. I think a fist is always good to have and something more relaxed where you might think, hmm, that's pretty similar, but then it depends on what angle. So once you have it in this pose, you got the nice, simpler triangular pose. So you can kind of look at what do I need for specific angles? This one's almost a bit too specific, but anyway, and something where maybe that is the case. So again, these two are potentially much more um, detailed, but you go from a default and you have all those basic poses, which again, I know this is, I'm just joking here, but you might need a point, potentially something more tense, definitely something more relaxed and potentially a fist. And you can always go with some poses in between. Now, why am I showing you this? So let's pretend you are in a relaxed pose. Well, that's exactly what you don't want. You don't want your hands to be like this. So what you can do now, you can select this, and it's, I think my relaxed pose is this one, right? So what you can do is, you have all the fingers selected through that little script here, whatever tool you're gonna have, and then you can middle mouse control over here to this pose and key. So now when I go back here, you can see that default, and on this case, 
I have now a default hand pose. And again, you can adjust this and should adjust this depending on the angle. But for a general storytelling pose, and again, you can tweak things where you can change the pose depending on the angle, but that's what I mean with a quick library. So it's pretend whatever, like the frame before, you need something where you, you need your character to be in pain, you can take this, select all, middle mouse drag, key all, and now you have this pose. Let's pretend this is a bit more of a, you know, whatever, pain pose. And here it is. You don't have to go in there and select every controller and repose. You have it right there. And in this case, you can populate your character with specific poses that work. So this probably is gonna be used a lot, like I said, potentially a fist, maybe, no, maybe, but for sure this more relaxed pose, and maybe something in between. Again, depends what you need. So what I would look at is in your initial blocking and your planning of your shot, you go, hmm, so I need something where the character is pointing a lot. Maybe it's a politician, you need that specific politician pose with the fist. So you look at what does my shot need, and then you create that library before frame one or whatever your, you know, your render range is, and then you start creating your poses. And that has helped me a ton where I just wanna block something quickly, but I don't wanna go in there and again, just look at every control and post things out. It takes way too long. I look at what did I create, my 10 main poses, take that, middle mouse drag over, copy it over, and here's my pose. And technically you can use the same thing for your eyes, your mouth, so whatever you have, maybe it's a foot toe pose, anything where you don't have access to a studio library, pose library type of thing, or whatever tool, you just have your rig and it's a simple rig and it's just Maya, you have nothing else in terms of help. This is, to me at least, a very helpful and a fast way, and I've used this before, and it's helped me tremendously in terms of saving time. Because posing all that stuff out one by one, you know, digit by digit and joint by joint, it just takes so much time. So whatever you can do to save time and speed up your workflow, the more tips like that you have, the better. Now technically you can also just save that pose and you can select all those controllers and then you do the same thing with the script, drag it over. Then you have buttons with specific poses. If you don't want to go back with the time slider, copy over, you can just select that and have that in your script. Again, there are many, many ways how to do this. This is just one of many ways and this is one way that has helped me. So maybe this is something you're familiar with or not, or maybe you have other type of tools that maybe is kind of the same, but faster. Let me know, let me know in the comments, let other people know what are your tricks that help you speed up your workflow without relying on tools and scripts, where it's just something basic. What can I use within Maya to speed up my workflow? So any tips that you have, let me know in the comments. That would be awesome for other people to see. And that's it. If that was helpful, as always, a like and a subscribe and hitting that bell button for all the uploads, all that good stuff, I would love it. It helps me, it helps the channel, and it gives me good feedback. And other than that, that is it from me. Thank you.